Oi, what's the best game where you get to eat pie? Oi, what's the best game where you play a dead guy? Aye? You'll find I'm in VG247's podcast. Here, what's the best game where you swing from a rope? And what's the best game where you battle the Pope? Like I said, you will find out in this your podcast. Hello and welcome to VG247's Best Games Ever podcast, where we attempt to find the best game within an extremely specific category. For example, this week we're looking for the best game that really needs a remake, inspired, of course, by the Dead Space remake coming out uh, today. Video games tend to age very badly in ways that are completely unique to the medium, and remakes are often necessary to keep the classics fresh and playable in a landscape of ever-shifting audience expectations. Some games just don't hold up visually anymore, or they have archaic controls that are baffling to modern players, or they're simply not available, missing from storefronts or incompatible with current-gen hardware. Precisely none of these things apply to the original Dead Space, but let's not dwell on that. Editor-in-Chief Tom Ari joins us. Hello, I thought that was going to be a mean intro for me. No, see, I really like throwing (laughs) in stuff about archaic and not holding up and you thinking it's going to be about you but then just not doing it uh associate editor alex donaldson hello and uh guides editor james billcliffe Uh, i could really see that 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 intro joke happening in slow motion and then when it didn't land it was just like tom (laughs) says it was just it was just crazy (laughs) yeah i think i need to stop being mean to tom now um mainly because he's responsible for me paying my mortgage um okay so uh it's the best game that really needs a remake obviously the game is how you interpret it really needing a remake i think we should first hear from alex because this is bound to be uh mental <laughs> you, know, it's actually, you know what it's actually not meant i feel like with this with this podcast i always go one of two ways right i'm always either like uh picking something that's a bit out there um yeah. uh, and a bit crazy or picking something that that comes uh from my heart and this one definitely comes from my heart, which means Tom rolls his eyes immediately because it means it's going to be a, a, a JRPG or a fighting game or something like that. Um, it's better it not be a... the Pixel Remasters again. It not <laughs> no, be it, is, it, is a, it is a JRPG and it is a Final Fantasy game. But it actually comes back to, um, I wrote an article sometime in 2021, maybe 2020, um, about, and, and my game is, uh, Final Fantasy VIII. And... So basically, this article was about how they remade Final Fantasy VII because um, it was this, you know, it it was this this massive, earth-shattering game. And um, if you if anybody has never seen, I imagine many people have not seen it, but it is very popular nevertheless. um, Tim Rogers, Action Button, he did a review of the Final Fantasy VII remake. It's like an incredible video essay on YouTube. It is like several hours long but tim is just one of the funniest people on the planet and he just makes it fly by great thing to put on while you're working obviously don't turn this off to watch it but you know once this is over if you've got a lot to do for the day maybe pop his review on and in that review he does a big thesis about how in many ways the he does a thesis about the first time he heard someone talk about a final fantasy 7 remake Yes. was the moment that he first clapped eyes on Final Fantasy VII for the first time. And he recounts this story about being at college and someone playing the demo of Final Fantasy VII in the dorm room and everyone else crowding around to watch this PS1 demo disc because it was such a such a big deal graphically and stuff. Yeah. And he recalls that during that, obviously there's the big difference in Final Fantasy VII between the CG cutscenes and the real gameplay. And during that, a girl said, why can't the whole game look like that? And he was like, that was the first time anyone in, in his life sort of said that there should be a remake of Final Fantasy VII. And then the ensuing 20 years were full of people saying that. Every time that something changed in games, when they added voice acting for 10, people were like, how cool would Seven have been with voice acting? And so on and so forth. So everyone always talks about Seven. But my argument and my thesis was always that Seven is a really interesting game that's sort of like they threw everything at the wall and mm. they tried everything and a lot of it sticks. And in my opinion, Seven's a, a near... The perfect game doesn't exist. But on, on a short list of games that are very near to perfect, Final Fantasy VII's up there with like your Ocarina of Times and your Super Mario Worlds and your Sonic 3 and Knuckles Ears and things like that. Um, 
Final Fantasy VIII, however, is this mad... You imagine you are, you've just had the biggest success in the world. You've blown the doors off. You've gone from being this niche series that's behind Dragon Quest and other RPGs in Japan to being the biggest RPG in the world. Sony mm. fell in love with your game and spent $100 million of marketing money on it um, and made it like a tentpole of their PlayStation strategy in the West. And so your game's been massive. And then you've got to make a new one. And so Final Fantasy VIII is this wonderful stretch of everything is, they go a little too far on everything. And so it's this wonderfully flawed, fucked up game where you can rip it inside out because the gameplay mechanics are a little bit uh, loosey-goosey in a way that's wonderful for RPG fans because it's one of those RPGs where in a Morrowind sort of way, you can just break its back. You can just break its back if you want, if you know what you're doing. (laughs) um and you know they try to be super realistic they've got all this they've got all this higher level of ambition the way they use the cg the scope of the story it's sort of got everything the mix of fantasy and reality and basically they do stretch it a little bit too far and it's almost like final fantasy 9 then is like this more old school more constrained um course correction because they realized that they were trying to do too much too fast with eight but this is why i think eight deserves a remake so much and when i if you say to me and i'm not big on remakes i was one of those people who said don't make final fantasy 7 i was one of those people who said don't remake final fantasy 9 i'm saying that now and probably in the, in a matter of weeks or months uh, square are going to ignore that advice and announce <laughs> a remake of nine by the sounds of the rumor mill and yeah. so i'm not big on remaking things i think let things live but one of the few products where I'm like, this could genuinely be quite significantly improved by a remake is Final Fantasy VIII because of all that unbridled ambition. Yeah. Because they were just going into that development like, there's no such thing as too ambitious. We just made fucking Final Fantasy VII. But then it was too ambitious and it sort of backfires a little bit. And so VIII is this weird and wonderful game where a lot of people love it. You know, shout out to Holly Bennett, who's like number one final fantasy 8 fan in the world <laughs> but um the but you know it, it takes a certain type of person to love it because it sort of is so nuts and goes so far yeah it's weird isn't it because every, for every mainline final fantasy since seven has in some sense been chasing seven. Oh yeah um and it's just like they got it perfect with that game uh, and have never quite got the balance right since. It's like a, a sort of, it's like a like an alchemist going mad because they once made gold out of shit, but could never quite do it again, <laughs> um, and, and just slowly gets worse at that. And, I've got, and I've, I, got I, a, I've got an issue. Yeah, um, I, I stopped listening quite early on because <laughs> <laughs> the reason was when Alex was going through all these these near perfect games. He listed Sonic 3 in Knuckles. I knew you were going to... Yeah. So, <laughs> let me tell you something, Tom. Like that, but so, I let me tell you something, Tom. How, how that do is... we include anything he says in good faith anymore, knowing that? This what, is what, a different... list of perfect games again, Alex? I said, I said, I said Ocarina of Time. I said yeah. Mario 64. Um, I would put probably Mass Effect 2 pretty high on that list. Yeah. Um, I'd put... I think you'd make the argument for Oblivion. Um but yeah, in my Absolutely opinion, Absolutely not. Oh, I said Super Mario World. <laughs> Super Mario World, I said also. But I, I this is a this is a whole separate <laughs> podcast. But in my opinion, and I know this is not a popular opinion necessarily, but in my opinion, Sonic 3 and Knuckles as one complete game when it's all locked on is, and I shit you not when I say this, the best 2D platformer of all time. It's better than Mario 3 and it's better than Mario World. Right, shut um, it down. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> right, Thank ten you, minutes. Sorry. Night. Thank you for listening to. Um, okay. Uh, right. Can I, mean, I can I just see a couple of issues with uh, with Final Fantasy VIII? Oh yeah, yeah. Go for the it. Because issues this is this is going to be uh, this is going to be <laughs> important for for the argument later. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. This is best game that that really needs a remake. So mm. the first thing that I'd say that after Final Fantasy VII remake. Is it just not the next one on the block, and therefore is a bit of a foregone conclusion that'll be? I don't think. At some point. I don't think it is though, because Final Fantasy VII remake is not a remake. I mean, spoilers, but Final Fantasy VII it's remake not, is, is not actually Final Fantasy VII 
remake. It's actually, yeah. we've had this discussion on the podcast before, it's Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> but the yeah. emphasis of how you say remake. that word is important because what it is actually is a sequel in disguise that starts out as a remake and morphs into something quite different in a meta way. Um, whereas I think F- Final Fantasy VIII is actually a game, because I know the other thing that's probably coming up is the mm. original version is available on modern platforms. You can play it, you can experience it, you can enjoy the elements of what it is for what it is. And I agree with all those things. However, the point I'm making is um, it's so ambitious and so mad and so all over the place um, that this is a game that would really benefit from sort of them coming back and going, right, we're going to sort of, we're going to reimagine this and tighten it up and actually try to fulfill the promise of what the original game is, which the original game couldn't really fulfill. And I think, were they able to fulfill the original game's promise Mm. in 1999, People would talk about eight now the way they talk about seven. It would have re- it would have supplanted seven as that as that. It's like how no one really not no one, but many far fewer people talk about Ocarina of Time now because Breath of the Wild exists. Yeah, that makes well, sense. And and you just mentioned it there that you can play also play eight on modern consoles, and it has also also already been remastered. Mm-hmm. So I'm not talking about a remaster. I'm talking about a remake. Well, but does it really need a remake different. if it's already been remastered and you can already play it? <laughs> That's a good point. Well, That's Dead Space is backwards compatible on uh, on on Xbox uh, S X, I mean, right? Dead and Space is the most baffling remake to me. The only more baffling remake to me is Last of Us Part One. No, but Jim, let's not get into that Jim's. one. Yeah, yeah. games, <laughs> games, Jim. Good graphics are good, Jim. I don't care what people say. If they make them look better, I'm all there for was, it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with how the original Last of Us runs. Not it, about how it, it runs. It looks beautiful. It, it looks so much better now. It does. It look better. Yes. Does Have it, it read really? It, Jim? it looks amazing. I the just. I've seen. Amazing. I've seen screenshots, and it's. No. It's. Uh, no. I mean, I don't like how they changed Ali's character model. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, look. Let, let's just carry on. Uh, right, Tom. Uh, let's hear mm. from you. What's your game right, so that desperately needs in, a remake? In keeping what James was just saying about how, really, you want to be looking at games here that are hard to run on, on current hardware, right? Things that are kind of yeah. lost to time um, and, like, archaic systems and stuff. And you're like, you could play it, but you've got to get something out of the storage cupboard or the loft or yeah, in, yeah. Or the, the, the damp cellar, in my case, and it's probably broken because it's been down there for five years and it's <laughs> not been sealed properly in his airtight bag because there were shit cheap ones that come loose. I do that love your of, little stories, Tom. That kind of thing. So... My my game is PGR two because PGR two, <laughs> of course, it is. As some background, if you don't know what PGR two is, it's the greatest racing game of all time. Um, that's all you need to know, really. Um, it's on Xbox, right? The original Xbox. People kind of forget that the original Xbox wasn't around for that long. Like it just kind of came a few years, maybe four years, then the three sixty came out. It was like a just they they got it out. This is good stuff, and they moved on. And the 360 was great, and it did play quite a lot of Xbox games. And it does play PGR2, but not particularly well. The menus are all broken. Half the time, like, there's some block covering the screen. It's not a very good way to play PGR2 because it just doesn't quite work properly. And then it's never come to current, like, current backwards compatibility. So basically, if you want to play PGR2 well on an actual console... You've got to play it on an Xbox, and that's a big faff, and most people don't want to do it, right? So mm-hmm. I think of it as a game that has, like, it's, it's not people aren't really, like, not enough people have played PGR2. It should come back. It doesn't have to come back as PGR2. They could make it come back as just PGR, right? Mm-hmm. That's fine. Um, but the reason why I love two more than the others is I think that the actual courses, the cities, are the best ones. Hmm. Like it's got um, Edinburgh, it's got Sydney. There's some really good um, locations that are some of my favourites to race around. And I think the actual handling has a more arcadey slant to it, so it just feels a bit less like some of the, the newer ones are. They still got they've still got like like that power slidey feel. They're not like full arcade, but they're leaning more towards like what you might see in a like a Forza Horizon type game, whereas. PGR2 felt a bit more arcade in that you could really do some um, slightly more unrealistic uh, slides and stuff. Um, but 
the point being that I think it looked great on the Xbox, but imagine if they redid all those cities, did did all the new uh, photography and stuff, rebuilt them all with like, how they look today. Um, I mean, it'd be a big project, obviously, going back and taking all that, getting all that data and stuff. But I think it'd be a really great remake. Um, I mean, obviously, it's never going to happen because they're just not going to fund that for a, a franchise that they don't need anymore. But as a game that is basically almost like if you wanted to play that game today, you'd really struggle. I would love, I'd love to see it come back. I mean, at a most basic mm. level, just get the licenses sorted, which is a big, big house in itself, and just put it out in in 4K or whatever, done. Um, <clears throat> but I'd love to see them properly redo it and do some kind of relaunch of the whole the whole series. What did... Um... Uh, didn't Project Gotham sort of become Forza? Is that, or, or am I imagining that? Is, no, is it sort not of really. Oh, okay. I mean, Forza. I mean, Forza got replaced by it. Yeah, Forza yeah, okay. was the serious racing game, which was like Xbox's answer to Gran Turismo, right? Mm. Um, PGR was sat slightly differently to mm. to that, in that it was more. I guess you could say it's more like Horizon is now, but Horizon doesn't have. Horizon's an open world racer, and it feels very different to mm. PGR, which was very like closed circuits in cities. But the other point is Horizon, lots of it is racing around open landscapes, right? PGR was all racing around cities. Um, mm. and it just felt better for that, like going around um like seeing all the landmarks and stuff. Um, I think mm. it just felt a bit more special than some of the It's fair to say though that Horizon. The Horizon has straight up has the kudos. Mm. system basically from yeah. those games but they, they, they're definitely like there are similarities i just think there is like even if they did like a dlc for mm. for a, a horizon game that was just entirely based around uh like say the next one wherever it's going to be based and just base all the dlc around an actual city a very tight built up city yeah. you get these bits in the horizon games but it's not quite the same as having dedicated courses around these you these know what locations. though tom I don't think I don't think not that it, this podcast is about that element, but the problem is you'll never get it because it will never come back because Forza has sort of filled the role. Mm. In fact, I think if Microsoft's bringing back a racing series, uh, they would bring back. And I would love Madness. to see them bring back Midtown Madness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sort of yeah. you sort of because Midtown Madness sort of I think of that as like the 3D successor of like Micro Machines. Yeah, I remember yeah. online of Midtown Madness, whatever the one I was on original Xbox, being so like chaotic and awesome. Yeah, um, the, the Xbox if, had great racing games: Midtown Madness, PGR, Rally mm. Sport, Forza. Just really good racing games. But yeah, PGR2 is the best one, so they should remake that one, and you can't yeah. play it easily. No. <laughs> I love Midtown Madness. You just said Midtown Madness, Tom. Um, right. Uh, the thing Did I find, uh, just as an aside, the thing I find incredible is that there have been two high-profile driving games set around Edinburgh, which is the worst city to drive in on the fucking planet. Um <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a more unpleasant experience in my life than trying to get a car around Edinburgh. I, it was at the height of like when they had the tram works, but like still, it's awful. And uh, the city has such verticality; there should be elevators. Um, but like, yeah, uh, I, I suspect I haven't played PGR two, but I suspect that the, its version of Edinburgh is probably more realistic than the one in Forza Horizon, because. Forza Horizon is effectively Princess Street and then a bunch of made up buildings. Mm. However, uh, the thing I say about Forza Horizon, in fairness, right, is because they tried to do the whole of the UK. Yeah. Every place is condensed. But in the moment when you're sort of driving around country roads and stuff, yeah. it does feel very authentically, I think, generally British. Generally, I'm not saying yeah. London matches up, Edinburgh matches up, but I'm saying the general feel, which I think is what they go for, right? It's sort of it's that it's that GTA quality of of you, of when you're driving around the downtown LA bit, if you've been to E3 or whatever, yeah, GTA yeah, Five, yeah. it doesn't exactly resemble it, but it feels exactly the same. It puts you right there. It, it, yeah. it is transportive, like the um, uh, the particularly, I mean the the, the Forza Horizon map really falls apart because you can drive from like where i live up 
roughly up to Edinburgh, roughly in about two minutes. Yeah. So it doesn't quite, but like there is that stretch of road up the east coast where you can go from uh, Bamburgh Castle up to Edinburgh, and it f- it does feel like that coastal road. I've driven up and down that road for real many times, and it's like there's bits of it where it's like it's not one to one, but like you say, it really nails the uh, the feel of it. Um, but uh, all right, okay, so. Uh, we've got another driving game now, uh, a very different one from James. Well, uh, can I just say that? But I was just having some fun there yeah. while you were talking, uh, looking at the the cataclysmic <laughs> franchise that is Project Gotham Racing, <laughs> and it's obviously uh, something that's touched the lives of so many people that the the people also ask box on when you just Google it, it says, "Is Project Gotham Racing related to Batman?" Is there a Harley Quinn in Gotham? And does the Riddler know Bruce Wayne? So it's obviously poised. It's obviously just touched the lives of so many people. Oh, yeah, does he? That is, those, these are questions that you could ask with this remake, obviously, or, or answer even. Uh, but, but my choice is um, kind of a mix of the, of the two, really. It's, a, like you say, a cult classic racing game that... You could also almost maybe even put onto that perfect game list because it like it just so perfectly encapsulated what it was trying to do at the time. Diddy Kong Racing. Oh no, that's a good no. shout. But um, th- and that would also be another great. That did Microsoft. get a remake. Yeah, yeah it's a terrible terrible remake. on the XBLA. Uh, no one uh, is DS. Yeah, so mine is the the two thousand and three cult classic, The Simpsons Hit and Run. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Which there were some I, discussions about this. Which I have been playing uh, through completely legal means on my <laughs> Steam Deck recently, and <laughs> it's uh, it's just brilliant. It's incredible, and you just think how how exceptionally great a, a kind of modern remake that actually made the. But because if you don't remember, The Simpsons didn't run is like a a sort of GTAification of Springfield and the Simpsons franchise, set across different levels where you play as. Uh, different ca- characters from the Simpsons family. So there's a that you start on a home level, you go to a Bart level, and all that sort of stuff. And the in a modern remake, you just think about how GTA Five works, how you switch between characters across this huge city all of the time. Oh, and yeah. you could it, with 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 a kind of modern Unreal Engine or whatever, you could you could have a, a seamless open world that is the entirety of Springfield where you can switch between characters on the fly and you could just modernize that game to such an incredible extent that it would just be a whole new experience, really, mm. that it would have all of the same humor, all of the same jokes, that going back to it, it's actually pretty funny that you can just have see, you can just hear how much fun like Nancy Cartwright and all of the Simpsons actors are having just like really off these stupid lines into the, into the uh, VO booth or whatever. And it's... <laughs> It, it, it's just a joyous game that has so much fun to it and it's a franchise that you can mine. There, there have been loads of great Simpsons games. There have been loads of terrible Simpsons games, but the the best ones really capture the, the humor of mm. the good seasons of The Simpsons, let's be honest. I saw a good meme the other day where it's like, uh, from that steamed hams bit where it's like Superintendent Chalmers saying like, and you call yourself a Simpsons fan, even though you think two thirds of the show is unwatchable, and, and Skinner's just like, yes, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah, just do a, a big open world Simpsons hit and run remake based on like I don't know what's the what's the co- accepted cut off twelve, thirteen, fourteen seasons. I thought the accepted cut off was like six, but th- that, that's rubbish. There are so many incredible <laughs> episodes that are in like eight, nine, ten, and eleven, especially. All right, okay, well, I my, think my behind the line- out of date. I okay. think the I think the 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 latest cut off is the behind the laughter episode, but this is getting into the weeds now. Okay, all right. I think yeah, it, it's just a brilliant game. It really needs a remake. It's in development hell because who who knows what who owns the rights to any of this stuff? Uh, who uh, the, the publisher's gone bust. The developer doesn't exist anymore. We just need the and there are loads of YouTube videos of people just like uh, remaking remaking it in. Uh, Unreal Engine 5 and all of this sort of stuff. And it just shows you that there's the appetite there too. There's the appetite. People want this. 
Yeah, people yeah. aren't asking if Simpsons Hit and Run is related to Batman. They don't need to know. They know what it is already. <laughs> and they want to play it. It's not the best Simpsons. Too. Not the best Simpsons game, though, is it? Yeah, it, it is. A hundred percent it is. Mm. Well, well, you think the Simpsons the Space game. Mutants. It's uh well, I mean, I think I, I always have a soft spot for the arcade game, right? Um, the, oh, the beat 'em up, the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, one. I, I, I always have, I always have, um, and a lot of people talk about Road Rage in a similar way, I suppose, I guess as well. But I'm not really as much into that, and that is sort of just a precursor to hit and run. But I think The Simpsons, the arcade game, as it was called, just The Simpsons, is a uh, is 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 the one for me. Um, I just, I, I, I don't. I can't. I can't accept that anyone it, thinks that that arcade game is better than The Simpsons <laughs> Hit and Run. I'm sorry. I think you're at it. <laughs> the, I mean, I'm not that big. Yeah. Of a, I'm not that big of a Simpsons uh, fan. So, I think that is a, that is a factor. I think around the time that Hit and Run came out, I was more interested in playing that absolutely terrible first-person shooter South Park game. Um, <laughs> Oh, I remember that. The Snowball 64, one. where you're yeah. shooting the turkeys and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I have a real soft spot, soft spot for hit and run. I promise this won't bias my conclusion. Of course in any it way. will. Of course it will. <laughs> <laughs> We're done already. This is it. Like, and you're just basically pretending now for five minutes that you're going to pick I'm not, something. I'm not. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm deliberating. My, my, I'm my, point, it my question is do we need more Simpsons? Right. This is well, the this, thing this I was going to say. This is preserving. Well, this is preserving be, classic Simpsons. It'll be. They'd have to. The thing is, they'd have to read. It'd have to be like a Final Fantasy VII remake style one, wouldn't it? They'd have to no. really redo it because they. Like, I don't, they'd well, have put to, it how into would a, they just a remake? Simpsons metaverse We've already where talked the about Simpsons how, are like, aware of owns, a previous game. Who owns this original game and stuff? Like mm. now, Dis- what Disney owns Simpsons now? Do they? Yeah, yeah. Disney. Yeah. So like, if they, they anyone's could do, got the legal could, team to unpick the license, they license could do it. it. But I feel like it'd be like it's just an open world Simpsons. It definitely is game. possible to unpick the license because like that that yeah. arcade game was in hell for a long time, and now you can go and buy, you can go to Walmart or Argos or whatever and buy uh, a free quarter size arcade machine of that Simpsons machine like they sorted out the rights to do that so i'm sure they could sort it out for the actual game yeah for the you, know, you know what we should have picked we should have picked goldeneye because we've got these two sort of not great ports to switch and xbox we mm. could have had the really good there was a film Proper proper on remake with Daniel proper, Craig, which is like insane that that, that ever happened. Not that one. That was no, okay, but, no but, but just like in terms of like the GoldenEye has had so many, uh, so many cracks at making a comeback in some form, and it kind of skids the landing I, I every think, time. I, well, I, well, I, the thing is, I, I've gone on record with this before on on yeah. VG247 dot com. I think that Daniel Craig GoldenEye remake is actually pretty decent mm. it's definitely a game of its time it's a shooter that came out in like 2009 10 something like that so it's a yeah. call of duty clone it's a cod it's a cod floor four clone absolutely but as a cod floor four clone in the same way that the original golden eye was sort of a weird mix of doom and virtue cop um it's very yeah. which that's it what really the original is, golden eye yeah. is you move around like like doom but then you plant your feet and aim in exactly yeah, the same way as in stop, but it turns into a light gun um, game yeah. yeah yeah and 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 in in that sense i think that obviously the ea game that they did is fucking shocking but that um the ps2 one but that daniel craig golden eye game is actually at least i, I remain really impressed by it by the fact that they got daniel craig by the fact that they uh, got back the writer of the original film and said, Honestly, "Can you update this story for 2007?" The balls on um, it as well to be like, "We're we're we're remaking Goldeneye, but it's with the current Bond." Like they got it, uh, like, Nicole Scherzinger, how you pronounce her name, to re-record <laughs> the the theme song. Yeah, like the, David Arnold, who did did the music for all of Brosnan's films, but Goldeneye and the first two Craig films did the soundtrack. Like that game is is good. But here's the thing about Goldeneye: I know you said it skids the landing every time it comes back. I and believe I, it almost, does. I, thought, I, d- I thought about writing bit about this, but everyone's being like pedantic wankers on Twitter, going, "Here come the here come the people who are going to make a fool out of themselves, saying Golden Eye isn't that good." <laughs> but, <laughs> but those idiots are saying that, <laughs> and Golden Eye is good. But here's the thing: I'd say, yeah, Perfect Dark is better, and it always was. 
<laughs> and that got a remaster ages ago and yeah, it's yeah. the same sort of game like if and you want to play that re- sort of game that remaster is great you can shoot peter molyneux in a toilet um so you know so yeah i mean i think uh we need to play that jingle now where i come to a conclusion uh, i do apologize first of all for sending uh donaldson off on one about bond uh <laughs> any time any excuse you know any excuse any excuse to talk about George Lazenby's frilly shirts and, Bill, and Bill oh, I was about don't to get me started on that I was about to say that Bill Cliff remained uh, graciously silent and, and, and steeled himself throughout that but then I just, just had, had to protect I just had to protect GoldenEye 2008 or whenever it came out I had to protect it because people slag it off and it's not fair it's a good game <laughs> okay. we've got some really good games here I think um I don't think Final Fantasy VIII is destined for a remake, uh, like like James says. I because it's it doesn't have it's kind of like the ugly stepchild of that series, uh, certainly of that era, um, and I don't think it has the uh, uh, nobody's clamoring for it. And I, don't I think, think it's it, notable yeah. they did they re released all three of those PS one games. They did yeah. seven, eight, and nine, but eight is the one where they actually called it Final Fantasy VIII Remastered and they did a little bit of work on it. Yeah. They, they replaced the character models and stuff, even though it's the same game otherwise. And I think the reason eight got that treatment and seven and nine didn't is because they knew mm. they were going to do more with seven and they knew they were going to do more with nine. Yeah. But they and knew they weren't going to do eight, so they like made the a, remaster a bit this more. This is the last chance we're going to get to do anything yeah. with eight, so let's do what we can. Is yeah. Type Zero not doing more with eight? Is that not in the same universe? Or? No, no. Oh, wow. and, and the guy behind Type Zero left the company and under not good circumstances, I believe. So oh, I don't think there'll ever enough. be any more of those. <laughs> so draw a discreet veil over that one. Um, okay, and uh, Project Gotham Racing 2. Uh, is it, does, it, does that need a remake, Tom? Or is it just yeah. that Tom Mori wants a remake? I'm not because- saying... Who said it? About, <laughs> I don't care what other people want. Uh, yeah, but it's not it's not really needed, is it? Because if you want to drive around Edinburgh, there's there's If we well we're about to pick, right, what we're about to pick, <laughs> Simpsons hit and run, which James <laughs> just said he's been playing. Right. I'm gonna get on to this, right? Because the Simpsons hit and run, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's a minor miracle that you got it running on a Steam Deck because um I I don't know how to get that running on my PC, and I gave up trying. <laughs> oh, it's right? easy. You just got to message Andy it, Hamilton, and he'll send you all the links. <laughs> <laughs> it's Speaking easy. of Gold Knight. Speaking of Gold Knight, actually, you know the um, the XBLA, uh, the abandoned 360 remaster of Golden Eye yeah. that Andy Hamilton. Um, I've got a copy of that on my PC. Yeah, Andy Hamilton absolutely evangelized that, and when they announced this port. Um, for a Switch and XBLA, I asked Andy if he was feeling okay when they announced it, and he was just like, "Not asked. It's not as good as that 360 remaster." So it isn't to be fair. Yeah, it it's not. It really isn't. Which is like and the amount of work that went into that remaster. It's insane. As an aside, sorry to, to sidetrack again, but yeah, I just sorry. remember the good old days of like this is a, like games media inside uh, the good old days of 360 partner net. So, mm. if, so for the oh, unfamiliar, the partner net was if you had a development kit Xbox 360, partner net was like a closed version of Xbox Live, um, and it had the store and stuff. But quite often, uh, although there were permissions that stopped you from from doing stuff and seeing stuff, quite often publishers and developers would just upload builds of games, especially XBLA games, smaller games, just into the partner net with no restrictions. So anyone who had a partner net account on a dev kit could download them. So like. That's probably how that GoldenEye remaster leaked because someone probably had a partner net build of it. There are certainly some. Um, remember when Sega was doing this? I feel like the Statue of Limitations is expiring on this now. <laughs> um, remember when Sega was doing all. They started doing Dreamcast remasters on XBLA. So they did like Crazy Taxi and Sonic yeah, Adventure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like I had. And it's probably. It's still on my. I've still got the dev kit somewhere. Um, there was a Shenmue one that was really early, but it was playable and it was really buggy. Um, yeah. But they obviously never in, ended up releasing on XBLA. Um, and then later on, obviously, they did the Shenmue remaster, what, what was that, two years ago now? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like there were things like that where you'd occasionally you'd, you'd have a meander through PartnerNet and go, Shenmue, and pr- quietly press download. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> the good old days. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I miss that entire era. I also miss the entire era where you would, you know, get sent to um, brothels in Korea. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, let's not get into that. Um, but the uh, yeah, so our winner this week is uh, it's got to be the Simpsons hit and run because it's like it's very difficult to get running these days unless you know Andy Hamilton. We're- We've established that, um, and uh, I ended up buying an Xbox, an original Xbox copy because it was backward compatible on 360. And I tried playing it, and it's fucking screen tearing all over the shop. So I'm like, no, nah, well, that's unplayable. Can't deal with that. And um, uh, apparently the best version, uh, console version from the time, is the GameCube version, but that goes oh. for like 120 quid. Wow. Well, I think I've got that. Um, so like, uh, uh, so it's basically either you've got you have to have like loads of money to spend on a 2003 GTA 3 clone, or you have to be like Angelina Jolie and hackers to get it running, <laughs> which apparently James is. And um, yeah, I think so. So, so, so because of like a, a combination of like technology advancing and uh, just insurmountable licensing issues. And uh, and everything else, it's uh, it's in dire need of of a refresh, um, and uh, I genuinely think it's one of the best games ever made. It's like wonderful. Jesus, I mean, it's really okay, not, calm though, down it's on that really now. Not. Well, like, congratulations not, for making the correct choice. It's one of right, if not one of the best games ever made, it's definitely one of the best licensed games ever made because it's it's such an incredible use of that license. Um, and, uh, and, and because it came out in that, in that period of like weird, uh, experimental GTA clones, the fact that it's a, it's a Simpsons license, but it is an experimental GTA clone at the same time. It, that combination just makes this wonderful thing that will never be repeated. Uh, you can carjack as Lisa Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in that sense, did did James win when I wasn't here? I haven't had a chance to listen yet. Did, did James win those weeks? He did. <laughs> I did oh, win God. those weeks. Yeah, no, I'm going. I've had enough of this. This is bullshit. <laughs> I think I don't. I don't. I can't remember. You didn't win both of them, though, did you? Uh, I've done three in a row now. I think. Okay. Uh, I think well, that's my record as well. I think my record is three in a row. If he wins another one, then I'm in trouble. I and think... I've I've got a pretty unassailable choice in the back pocket for, uh, for the one that, the topic that Tom keeps running away from. So oh, well, you're not on it next week, Donaldson. Oh. So so it's like so oh. actually like Donaldson like skipping a couple of episodes has given Bill Cliff a chance to just race in there. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be uh, turning gonna be to in... the dog and saying, "This is your fault." <laughs> <laughs> By getting ill. All right. Okay. Well, uh, that was brilliant. Thanks very much for listening. And uh, please do leave a five star. It's got to be a five star review on your podcast platform. Not that, platform not that person that left a three star review. That person who is almost certainly from Eurogamer <laughs> who left a three star review. Um, well, we haven't gone and left a lot of one star reviews on the Eurogamer podcast because Yet. we're. Uh, because we're consummate professionals and yes. uh, yeah uh, <laughs> and you know we do value our network colleagues uh, and uh, we're not petty so uh, I think I might send Connor to do it but um, yeah so uh, please leave us more five star reviews because we don't want any piss takers to get our average down because uh, that would be tragic and Tom would complain about that for months um, and uh, yeah please tune in next week for uh, what's the topic next week again James can you remember uh, we were supposed to do uh, followers that you would never hang around with in real life That's but Tom the one, keeps vetoing it the best game with followers you would never hang around with in real life uh, that's the topic next oh. week so stick around for that like I said you will find if you enjoyed the show please give us a five star review wherever you get your podcast it really helps us get the word out uh, we're not just a podcast of course if you'd like to hear more from the team then check out vg247.com for our fantastic news coverage features reviews and game guides thank you so much for listening goodbye <laughs>